Hello everyone, we're skipping up to section 5.3, differentiation of logarithmic functions. So um, we only deal with the natural log in BCAL. So uh, if you look at this, these first couple of questions, you see ln in there, which is natural log. That's a logarithm like you would have dealt with in algebra with a base of E. E is the Euler number. Uh, it's roughly 2.71828. You should have both an E button and a natural log button on your calculator um, if you look. So before we get started with these, I actually want to um, take a look at a table that kind of helps us derive the formula for the derivative of the log of x. So, Alright, so what I have here is notice at the top we're dealing with just the basic function y equal the log of x. What I want to do is use the average rate of change formula to estimate the instantaneous rate of change formula. In other words, to estimate the derivative. And so what I've done is over here in the first column, um, we've got x sub 1. Look on the first row, we've got x sub 1 is 2. I want to stay really, really close to 2, but remember for average rate of change, you've got to have 2 points, so that means 2 x values. So for x sub 2, I've picked something really, really close to that, 2.01. And I've done the same thing with 3, 3.01, 4, 4.01, etc., all the way down. In the y sub 1 column, I'm calculating what I get when I plug in 2 for x into the function. So if you get your calculator and hit the log of 2, you'll get this 0.693147181 number. For y sub 2, I'm doing the same thing for the numbers in the x sub 2 column. So if you hit the log of 2.01 in your calculator, you should get 0.69813472. So notice y sub 1 and y sub 2, they're really, really close. Okay, That's normal. The average rate of change formula was y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Okay, so I've literally done this calculation in the, in the next column. So I'll say for the first row here, I took this number 0.69813472 minus 0.69314781 and I divided all that by 2.01 minus 2. And it gives me roughly 0.49875, etc. And I've done this on a bunch of uh, different rows for just, you know, various numbers all the way through. Two through, I think I did all the way through 29, actually. Now, remember, this is not exactly the derivative. This is supposed to be just really close to the derivative. Because derivative means a single point, and I am just dealing with two values here, 2.01 and 2. They're real close together, so I'm just trying to, again, estimate the derivative. Take a look over at the last column, though. What I've done here is I've taken the numbers in this column, and I've rewritten them um, to the closest possible fraction. So 0.49875 is really close to one half. 0.33279 is really close to one third. 0.249 that's you know really close to 0.25, which is one fourth. 0.1998 is really close to 0.2, that's one fifth, etc. All the way down. What I want you to see is over here on the far right column, we have always a 1 in the numerator. doesn't matter what x value we started with. We always have a 1 in the numerator. And then the number in the denominator is always the same thing as x of 1. So we have 1 half on the first row, x of 1 was 2. We have 1 third on the second row, x of 1 was 3. 1 fourth on the next row, x of 1 was 4, etc all the way down. What that means is we can um, decipher that the derivative 
must be 1 over that original number. So if I'm just using the generic function log of x here, the original number there is x, whatever it happens to be. Okay. So this is the basic uh, rule for definition of a natural log. Now there is uh, another more generic formula that we're going to need to know here in just a little bit. So I'll go ahead and talk about that now before we look at any other problems. Okay, so kind of on the side here, if I have f of x equals the log of not just x, but something with x in it. So let's call it g of x. So it's not log of x, maybe it's log of 5x or log of 6x squared plus 3 or log of 7x minus 9. Okay, whatever, it's just something with x in it. The derivative going to be the same idea as what we had over here. Okay? The denominator of the fraction is going to be what we started with, just like x was what we were taking the log of here. So on the bottom of this, we're taking the log of g of x, so g of x is going to be on the bottom. Okay? Now what about the top? Well, it's not actually always 1. If it's the log of x, yeah, it's always 1, but this is not just the log of x. This is the log of something with x in it. Okay, so what I want you to notice over here is if I look at x, when I'm kind of hovering around there, um, the derivative of x is 1. In other words, in this formula, the top was the derivative of the bottom. So we're just making that same argument over here for this more generic formula. So there's your more generic formula for the log of g of x. The derivative of a log is a fraction. The bottom of the fraction is whatever you were taking the log of. And then the top is just the derivative of the bottom. Okay. So let's apply that here in number two. Okay. So we're taking the log of, we're doing the log of 13x. The derivative is a fraction. The bottom of the fraction is whatever you were taking the log of, so 13x in this case. And then the top was the derivative of the bottom. Well, the derivative of 13x is 13. Now on Hawks, if you type 13 over 13x in, it will accept that. I mean, that's okay. That's not simplified. For something basic like this, most people would go ahead and just cancel the 13s. So you actually end up with uh, just 1 over x. Hawks will take either of those answers. Okay. So that's what we're doing in this section is derivative of logarithms. Okay. Let's scroll down here to number 3. Uh, it's a word problem, but th there's really nothing special about it. Um, basically, if you read it, they give you a profit function. And then they're asking you to find the marginal profit function. So remember, marginal uh, was just the business word for derivative. So they're just asking you to take the derivative of the function. Okay, so we can do that. The derivative of 85x is 85, okay, just with the power rule. And then your second term is a logarithm. Okay, so we've got to do that rule that we just learned. So again, what did we just say? The derivative of a log is a fraction. The bottom of the fraction is whatever you're taking the log of. I'm taking the log of 6x to the 4th plus 13. And then the top is the derivative of the bottom. So on top, the derivative of 6x to the 4th will be 24x cubed. Of course, the derivative of 13 is 0. There it is. So it's actually a very simple rule. So again, I'm going to say it one more time. For derivatives of logs, you get a fraction. The bottom of the fraction is whatever you're taking the log of, and the top's the derivative of the bottom. That's all there is to it. After that, they're going to start throwing in uh, some of the previous uh, derivative rules that, that we've worked with. Um, if you look at number four, 
you've got 17 x cubed times the log of x cubed. So when we're, we're basically multiplying things with x in it there. We did that back in section 3.1 with the product rule. Okay, so basically 17 x cubed was first, log of x cubed is second. So the product rule is going to govern the whole problem. Your derivative is going to be first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. All right, so first is 17x cubed. Now derivative of the second, so the derivative of this log. So again, what rule did we just learn? The derivative of a log is a fraction. The bottom of the fraction is whatever you're taking the log of, so it's x cubed in this case. And the top is the derivative of the bottom. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Okay, so you're doing that logarithmic derivative for d second. Okay, keep going, plus second, which is the log of x cubed, times the derivative of the first. So derivative of 17x cubed um, with, the, uh, with the power rule would be 51x squared. Now similarly to what we did on test two, um, I told you just apply the derivative rule and stop. And there's no need to simplify anything here. So just type this in just like it is on Hawks and it will accept it. Okay. So it's a product rule question with the logarithmic derivative inside of it, specifically when you do derivative of a second. five here. Uh, y equal the log of x cubed. Make that a little bit bigger for you. Log, y equal the log of x cubed all over 21x to the fourth. Okay, so we've seen this rule before as well. This is something with x divided by something with x. This is the quotient rule. So whatever is on top we called high. Whatever is on bottom we called low. And then the quotient rule was low times the derivative of high minus high times the derivative of low all over low squared. So we just got to fill into that mnemonic now. Okay, so low is 21x cubed. Excuse me, 21x to the fourth, I should say. Okay, times the derivative of high. So there's where well, you're doing the derivative of a log again. So derivative of a log is a fraction. Bottom of the fraction is whatever you're taking the log of. We're taking the log of x cubed. And the top's the derivative of the bottom. Okay. So that's the logarithmic rule. Keep going with the rest of the quotient rule. Minus high, which is the log of x cubed times d low, so the derivative of 21x to the fourth would be uh, what 84 uh, x cubed, okay, with, just with the power rule, and all over low squared. Okay, so don't do anything special on bottom. Just take whatever's on the bottom, 21x to the fourth, put it in parentheses, and square it. Just like in the last problem, do not simplify. Okay, just leave it like that. Perfectly okay. Okay, in section 3.2, we dealt with the chain rule, or really the more specific case of the chain rule called the general power rule which dealt with x being in a parentheses all raised to an exponent. That's kind of what you see here. It's all, of course, it's all buried inside a log. Um, this problem can be done 
with the general power rule. Uh, but I'm just going to show you an easier way to do it. You just have to remember something from algebra. Okay, so there's a rule in algebra that says this. If you have the log of uh, x, say, to some exponent, let's just call it r, that's the same thing as saying r log x. Okay, so that's from algebra. Basically, what it's saying is exponents and coefficients are interchangeable in logarithms. Okay, so let's apply that rule here. Let's take this 4, that's the exponent, and move it out in front as a coefficient. So I'm not doing a derivative yet, I'm just rewriting this as 4 log 21 minus 14x. So notice you, do, you no longer have x buried in a parenthesis that's raised to an exponent. There's no more exponents. Okay. So that's the advantage of this rule. You can avoid having to do the general power rule or the chain rule from 3.2 if you know this little property here from algebra. Exponents can become coefficients in logarithms. Okay. And at that point, we've just got a regular old logarithmic derivative. 4 is a coefficient. Just like with any other derivative, coefficients can be brought down. And then you need to worry about doing the derivative for the log. Okay. So derivative of a log is again a fraction. Bottom of the fraction is what you're taking the log of. And the top is the derivative of the bottom. Derivative of 21 is 0. Derivative of negative 14x is negative 14 perfectly okay to leave this just like that. All right, and I believe that's it. Yeah, so this is actually a really short section, um, but it gets us through uh, the basics of everything um, that's on test three. All right, so get working on the homework.